You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Starboard by Munib Harun. Ryle's first strike sends patterns of scarlet saliva streaming across the starched white collars and faces of the students surrounding us. The response is raucous. The cheering, wild, bestial grunts, hoots, whinnies. Ryle, let him be, shouts someone. Didn't your mama tell you not to break your toys when they're new? Lip torn, reeling from that first strike. I wipe my mouth, take guard, and watch as she comes at me again. The playing field feels like a killing field. I didn't tell mom and dad it was this kind of boarding school. But then the options for a space school that would take new boarders mid-year were pretty pathetic. So it was starboard or bust. But this? This? It makes having your head flushed down the toilets by the school bully seem like a friendly, cuddly game of 20th century tag. This time, Ryle leaps, bared fangs, talons splayed. They glint like diamonds in the sun. And when she connects with my jaw, it's lights out till the end of the count. You humans bleed too easy. I'm in the recovery room, and the school nurse has finished patching me up. She's wearing those quaint blue scrubs circa 20th century fashion. Whatever next? Perhaps the teachers will wear togas to teach. It's my first day at Starboard, so I'm yet to meet the teachers. I surreptitiously snatch another glance at the nurse. I don't want her to think I'm staring at her because she's strange. Strange, yes. But the blue hue of her uniform complements her complexion. Both remind me of the sky. Remind me of Earth. And on this vessel, in this big black backwater of space, anything that reminds me of home, even if it's an alien skin, is welcome reminder. Maybe I have some sort of clotting deficiency. I'm used staring at my bloodied shirt. The nurse hoots so hard from so close up that I grind myself hard against the backrest. I'm anxious to avoid those twin tusks jutting out from her elephantine mouth. I don't need more injuries. Boy, soon you'll know, she says, taking my hand to check my pulse. What do you mean? I ask. My fingertips claw anxiously at the bedsheets. My heart thumps once more. She quiets me with a raised hand whilst she finishes checking my pulse, then lets go of my wrist as she speaks. Once a vovoid has you in her headlights, she's going to keep on coming. Keep on coming, you might not see her next time. I feel like I'm going to burst a blood vessel or something. Why me? What the hell have I done to her? I was just minding my own business watching some students play Xenon Ball on the VR field, and then bang, out of nowhere that happened. I leave the infirmary after another opioid injection. The pain, rather than being chased away, seems to have burrowed down deep inside me, as if it is some sort of brain beetle that has found its nest. I make it to class, just in time. Relief washes over me when I see she is not there. I sit on a hard plastic seat at the back of the room and survey the students as they stream in. Most, much later than me. Horned drashids with their dragon scales sit next to orange gargantulas, their translucent skins a window onto their six-chambered hearts. Just when I'm starting to feel like an oddball, a girl walks in. She's a bottle blonde. Real blondes have been extinct since 2189. With a pencil skirt and a green kirtle, she scans the crowd. Spotting me, she cracks a smile and ambles my way. Hello. I say. Hi, she says with a whisper, taking the empty seat beside me. I stare ahead, toward the front of the class. The four-armed Grenadin has stood up, and from his mortarboard hat, I say that he must be the teacher. I'm Philip, I say, speaking out of the side of my mouth. I hope you didn't get too injured out there. I lick my upper lip and feel it throb like a broken heart. I'll live to fight another day, 
She says nothing, but I can feel her eyes on me. Fight, she says after a long pause. I shrug. Okay, it wasn't really a fight. I stood there while that thing pummeled me senseless. Thing? There's an edge to her voice now, and I turn to look at her. You don't know much about vovoids, do you? She says, returning my gaze. No, I say, staring over her shoulder. Her blue eyes are too searching and intense to stare at for long. Well, firstly, you should know that wasn't a fight. It wasn't an assault, and it wasn't a pummeling. I see. Well, I'd hate to see your definition of any of those things. Secondly, vovoids sometimes get carried away in the heat of the moment. What happened to you was really just, well, uh, hello, I like you, and I'd like to get to know you better. I smile and shake my head. So you're saying it was like a chat-up line? She nods. I'm sure she's very sorry. She a friend of yours? No, I just know Vovoids rather well. Anything else I need to know about them? I watch as she affects a pose, as if deep in thought like Rodin's thinker. What you saw was a Vovoid in natural form. She looks pensive as she speaks. Their emotions are heightened when on natural, but when garbed in other skins, they affect the psyche of those they are configured as. You should be finding your next encounter much easier, I suspect. Suddenly, the Grenadian at the front of the class raises his voice. But before we stop talking, I have one final question. You didn't tell me your name, I say. What is it? She smiles shyly before speaking. Sorry about the lip, Philip. I'm Rael. This was Starboard by Munib Harun. Munib is a pediatrician, medical editor, writer, and runner. He lives in Yorkshire, where he is trying to tame a wild imagination. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.